President Biden and his administration promising a response to is coming to the deadliest attack on U.S. troops in years. We had a tough day last night in the Middle East. We lost three brave souls in an attack on one of our base, and we shall respond. The President and I will not tolerate attack on U.S. forces, and we will take all necessary actions to defend the U.S. and our troops. Respond decisively to any aggression. And we will hold responsible the people who attacked our troops. We'll do so at a time and a place of our choosing. But so far, it's all talk, no action. Right now, the administration is grappling with its failure to deter Iran-backed terror groups who had launched a deadly drone strike that killed three American soldiers and injured at least 40 others. The Pentagon just releasing the photos and the names of the three fallen soldiers. They were stationed at a base known as Tower 22 on the border between Jordan and Syria. Fox sources confirming that the lethal drone had gotten past the air defenses at the base because it was mistaken for a U.S. drone expected to return at the same time. So what did Iran know? The Pentagon and the White House not confirming that story yet, but says Iran had its fingerprints all over it. So far, the Iran proxies have launched over 165 attacks on U.S. forces. It's causing many to point out that the administration's one-line message against the radical regime is not working. I have one word. Don't. Don't. What is your message to Hezbollah and its backer, Iran? Don't. 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 What's the message to Iran? Don't. As President Biden said, just don't. Exactly. One word. Pretty straightforward. Incredible. The soft line on Iran continuing today with the White House and the Pentagon both ruling out a direct conflict with Iran. We are not looking for a war with Iran. We are not seeking a conflict with the regime in a military way. We don't seek war. We don't seek further conflict. We don't want to see this widen out into a regional conflict. But we will continue to do whatever we need to when it comes to protecting U.S. forces. This is our focus. Our focus is not to escalate this into a broader regional war or conflict. No one wants that. Judge Janine, let's just jump right in and get your take. I, I, I got to tell you, we are not looking for a war with Iran. I mean, Iran is sitting there and saying... We can do whatever we want to these people. Look, Joe Biden is terrified of escalation. He really is. He's proven it time and time again. He says, we will not tolerate it. We will respond, except for the 165 times that they hit us in Iraq and Syria with many of our soldiers with traumatic brain injury, which is a lifelong injury. And then two weeks ago, Joe Biden's beating his chest and he says, Iran got the message. And that was a couple months after Sullivan says, you know, Everything's quiet in the Middle East. I mean, we are clueless and feckless on the world mm -hmm. stage. We've given Iran a pass because we don't want to get into what, involved in World War III. And I think it was Mike Pompeo who said this morning, we may not be at war with Iran, but they're at war with us. And so we've got to try to tr thread this needle in a way where we recognize they attack us with impunity. We now have soldiers who are dead. They are not stupid. What they did with their drone, they followed an American drone that was turning, returning home to uh, Jordan, and they literally followed it, and the Americans didn't see it, and it killed three servicemen and injured 34 others. We've got American hostages being held by Hamas. We don't even know if they're dead or alive at this point. And the latest thing is Joe Biden says, today, it was wholly uncivilized. Give me a break. Right. Get in there and start fighting. And let me just say one more thing. What did Trump do? He killed Soleimani. What did Trump do? He enforced the sanctions. He, he, is a, he is the person, if we look at the chart of where Iran was financially under Biden and what they are doing now under, um, I mean, under Trump and where they are now with Biden, it's very clear. They hurt when we bleed them financially. And what we allow them to do is to sell oil on the open market, give them $6 billion in money for the hostages. And today, Biden had nothing on his schedule. Nothing. Did he call the families? What did he do? There's also, Jessica, the, you know, when you look at that montage of what they've been saying, that Iran knows not to do anything, well, that has proven to not yeah. work. And that also, when you look at the administration officials that spoke out today, Blinken, Austin, Biden, they all had to read the statements of condolences. 
as if they don't feel it. And I, I'm not saying that they don't, but it's strange to me that the reaction is so subdued and in a way that where you have to like read every word that you're sorry that it happened. I think that they were genuinely surprised, which seems strange considering what has happened over the last few weeks. If you have 150 plus attacks, unfortunately, someone is bound to die from something like this. Um, mm. And I think that the response does need to be more heartfelt, even if in the most craven analysis of this, you're thinking back to the withdrawal from Afghanistan, which was a seminal turning point in terms of how a lot of Americans felt about President Biden and the Biden administration, not necessarily the decision to leave Afghanistan, but how it was executed and the fact that we lost 13 service members um, and people didn't feel that there was an adequate level of sorrow and appreciation for what they had sacrificed for us and that maybe there was more that we could have done to ensure that we got out and that those people survived. So I think that that's something that needs to be done better. I would say it's Secretary Austin's first day back at work. He is recovering um, from a cancer and reading the statement, And but you would want more. In terms of the Biden administration financing them, the $6 billion has not transferred hands. It's being held by the U.S. and Qatari governments. You say that with Donald Trump, no one died. After he took out Soleimani, a few months later in March of 2020, there was a rocket missile that hit an Iraqi base and we lost two service members. And I, I don't know if you were critical of him then, but there was a direct response to him taking out a terrorist that no one disputes and there was bipartisan congratulations for Donald Trump mm -hmm. in terms of taking that action. So I just want to be fair about that and accurate about the money and the financing and what about selling oil on the open market but I you mean, said six billion dollars and i well, and that was I, one of the things okay. just one well let me get jesse in so this attack was scheduled to be right at dawn pre-dawn so at a sleeping barracks to make sure that there was maximum harm yeah, whatever anti-drone defenses we have aren't good enough. Yeah. When you saw the map, there's a lot of U.S. service members on these bases throughout the region. And if we're just going to sit back and receive pot shots, that's not a strategy. Mm -hmm. You can't go out and say don't, and the Iranians do. You can't tell Putin don't, and he invades Ukraine. You can't tell the migrants don't come, and they come. The guy has no deterrence. He's not respected as a commander-in-chief. And people all across the world are just running through his red lines. Now, Kirby's out there saying, we don't want to start a war with Iran. We don't want war in the Mideast. Neither do I. No one wants no one direct wants. conflict. Of course not. But why are you acting like, oh, we don't want any trouble? <laughs> you, sometimes you have to use force in order to de-escalate. And so far, Joe Biden's done nothing. Now, the strategist I talked to said, you could hit proxies maybe wouldn't do much. You could even hit the Iranians inside Iran. Okay. He said the main pressure point is Karg Island, which is their crude oil terminal right off their coast, completely would wreck their economy. It would take about a million barrels of oil offline per day. And there's not even a bridge to the stupid island. So like it would take years for them to repair it. And then they would have no money to finance all of these little proxies. Now, we have to do something more because right now, this is now the deadliest attack since Abbey Gate. Mm -hmm. And we're not even including the two SEALs we lost that were raiding that Iranian vessel. They say they drowned. I don't even know if that's a true story because right. I don't even trust the defense secretary because he lied about being under anesthesia for a week. So this is a very critical time. I just hope he does the right thing. But I do not trust Joe Biden to handle this Delicately. And at any time right now, we could be a week away from Iran having a nuclear weapon. And at any time as well, this could turn into a national security election. Yeah, you know, I'm just glad that Lloyd Austin is back. Uh, mm -hmm. I just wish Joe Biden was. I mean, did, when you saw him there, he acted like he was reading the early bird special at Denny's. Uh, that wasn't a show of strength. It, even his life alert was blinking. It was bad. Remember, I, I, remember how... Trump was deemed an agent of chaos. Four years of turmoil to be replaced by the calm, cool waters of Joe Biden. Mm. 
What a pyramid of feces we were sold by the media. We're now experiencing basically a nonstop tornado of incompetence and confusion from Kabul to supply chains to the Middle East to Ukraine. How much more can we take? I mean, I agree. Trump's words, you know, they made people uncomfortable. They made them nuts. But the world was kind of peaceful. And maybe there's something to be said for that, that there is peace through unpredictability and saying we don't seek war, as Jesse says, that's an obvious statement. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to say that. You don't have to say that. I don't know what Trump would say, but he would, he would not say we don't seek war. He'd say, let's see what happens. You know, <laughs> uh, we don't want to get into war, but, you know, we're happy to oblige if they wish. The way he dealt with uh, North Korea, I think what happens is we get stuck in the prison of two ideas, bomb them or do nothing. When, in fact, you step back, you get out of the prison and you eliminate the predictable voices, the people that say bomb immediately. Right. And the people that say, no, don't yeah. bomb. There's so much there. And it's like either going after the proxies. Right. Or taking somehow psychologically taking North Korea off the list of existential risks that no one ever considered, right? There is a path forward. You need to assess who the players are, the timing of these events, how this happened. What are you going to do up until November when the issue could solve itself with a new president? See, these are smaller, these are bigger ideas, right? Which lead to smaller, manageable problems. Right now, the small prison ideas of bombing or not bombing will lead to what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Can I just add to that? Uh, the, the fundamental problem of what's going on right here is that Joe Biden is so lockstep with Israel right now. That's really what aggravates Iran in all of this and Russia. I think that's and the fundamental problem? I think or that, is that he's Iran in is the completely region. anti-Semitic and yeah. wants to wipe Israel off the no. face of the earth. Well, of course. And no, we're I'm the, saying behind the October 7th. No, I'm saying the problem, for, if Joe Biden was not such a staunch ally of Israel right now, I doubt that this would be happening. Mm, I don't we know. We wouldn't oh. be over there. What, then why the timing? The other thing is, I would say this, that the House last year passed a bill, it's called the No Funds for Iran, Iranian Terrorism Act. It's mm -hmm. sitting in the Senate. If you guys want to show that you can do something, at least do that and show that you have something up your sleeve in Washington. Hi everyone, I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.